And as we celebrate this Christmas time, we are thankful for our faith, uh, for our family, our friends, our religious community, and all the blessings of the previous year. But let us be thankful first and foremost for the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us, for Him who humbled Himself, who set aside, he, he, he did not stop being God, but was nonetheless still God, truly God and truly man. And he came to live with us for those 33 years to work about our salvation. And today we celebrate that in a special way. Consider these words from St. Catherine of Siena regarding Jesus' incarnation, the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. O oh, sovereign sweetness, you have deigned to unite yourself to our bitterness. You, brilliance with our darkness. You, wisdom with our stupidity. You, life with death. You who are infinite with us who are finite those contrasts that we see. God who is infinite but still humbled himself to come live with us, but not just to have us remain here, but to raise us up, to open for us new life, to become sons and daughters of God. That is what the incarnation means, that we become brothers and sisters of the Lord through baptism, through a life of prayer, frequenting the sacraments, and this helps to illumine our darkness. As Brother Victor chanted in that first chapter of St. John's Gospel, that is the prologue of John's Gospel, those first 18 verses, and it, it's, a, it's a mysterious hymn uh, inspired, John was inspired to write that, and the early Christians, it is thought that they used it as a hymn of sorts, but it leaves you wanting, you know, this, and, and this little glimpse into the mystery. And I love that fifth verse in the chapter where it says, and the darkness could not overcome the light. It could not comprehend the light. It could not wrap itself around the light. It could not extinguish the light. It could not extinguish God's glory no matter how hard the darkness tried. He could not extinguish the light. And this is, this is a great gift to us that the darkness cannot overcome the light, regardless of the darkness that we experience in our lives and those ups and downs and those struggles, that inevitably we as Christians in the world are going to encounter, it's, it's going to come. We have bullseyes on us. The devil wants us. But his darkness cannot overcome us if we belong to Christ. And this is a great hope for us. God's love is a great mystery and his glory is revealed to us little by little in the divine light. Kind of like when the dawn comes and you see the light coming little by little by little and suddenly it's no longer, it's no longer dark. It's really neat to be here in the chapel of divine mercy early in the morning. And you might be praying, you might have fallen asleep praying. Um, I've done that. I don't think these guys ever do that, but I've done that, I admit. But then you, you, you wake up or you look up and you, you look through this window and there's light. And it just, it's just a little, wow. And it's a reminder though, a reminder of God's glory, God's glory through his creation, that God is present. God has put a little, a little dab of his glory, of his light, of his life, into all his creatures, but into human beings in a special way. He has given us a share in that light and that glory through his life of grace. But through the rest of creation, we see his beauty, we see the light of the sun, and so there's that little reminder, and we give praise to God for that little, that light, that reminder of his goodness, of his glory. He revealed the mystery of his incarnation little by little. Think about the life of Jesus. First, when he became incarnate in the womb of the Blessed Mother. In this brief exchange with the angel Gabriel and the Blessed Mother, and she said yes. And then the nativity. And then the, the shepherds and the kings. 
later on, the presentation, Simeon and Anna. And there's these little, these little bursts of light, and we see, like, who is this child? What is he set about to do? And eventually, at the wedding feast of Cana, and the miracles, the healings, the, the healings of the lepers, the possessed, the blind, the sick. And he gives us those little, a few more bursts of light, his healing power. Then the transfiguration, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. He's giving us great big bursts of light at that point. He is truly the savior of the world, but that does not end. His light and his giving and his gift does not end with his ascension into heaven because his glory continues on in his creation. His glory continues on in each one of us when we are in a state of sanctifying grace, when we are striving to serve him as good Catholics, as good Christians, striving to avoid sin and being patient with ourselves if we fall, taking advantage of the sacraments, the sacrament of confession. But this gentle revelation of Jesus to us as our Savior, the revelation of the Father's glory, so to this glory in our lives, a slow, gentle revelation. This past Friday, I met a fellow for the first time. He is a Presbyterian gentleman, had been a Presbyterian. He's Catholic now. And this just reminded me when I met him, he was just such a fine man and a fine believing man. You could tell that he had a deep faith and had a great uh, he cherished his time as a, as a Presbyterian, but he loves being a Catholic. But how God continued to work through him and work through his wife. He'd married a Catholic girl, and she was set on raising the children Catholic. And he, was, he had no problem with that, but he continued to go to his Presbyterian church. She took the kids to the Catholic church, and sometimes he would go. Like at Christmas time, he would go, because the Presbyterians didn't have as many services. And over time, he came to the realization, I think I'm supposed to be Catholic. Now, keep in mind, he was a prominent member in his congregation. He was an ordained elder as a Presbyterian. And so he was actually going to be giving something up. He was kind of prominent. And this was kind of a big deal. And he went to his pastor and he said, you know, I think I'm supposed to be Catholic. And this is, this is cool because the pastor said to the gentleman, you know, at least once a week, I talk to someone who's going to leave our Presbyterian congregation. I try to talk them out of it. But in your case, I think you're supposed to do that. It's like, wow. The light of Christ, God's glory at work, even in that Presbyterian minister who I'm told was a very, very fine, honest, righteous man. And so this gentleman came into the church. And... His wife, though, through all of this, his kids, they didn't nag him. They prayed for him. They prayed that he do God's will and that he be open to that will in his life. And so, in our lives, as we receive the little king of the Gentiles, the king of all nations, Jesus, that we, too, look for that glory, ask for that glory, ask for that grace in our lives, and that we be patient we be patient with those around us, those around us who may be struggling, those who might be in a rut, maybe we're the one in the rut, that we be patient with ourselves, but that we cooperate with God's grace and his revelation of his glory to us in the things that are going on in our lives, that we be open to him because this Christ who lived among us he revealed himself little by little gently and he showed his love to us. He didn't give deadlines. He even submitted and cooperated with our limitations. And so this Christmas day, this morning, we ask this king of the nations, this man who was true God and true man from the line of David, known as the key of David, the root of Jesse, to unlock the door of our hearts that our doors, the doors of our hearts might be opened to let the glory of God illumine those dark areas in our lives. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.